Just here, hawaiirealestate.org, coming to you from the beautiful island of Maui, Hawaii. It is August 29th, Tuesday, 9.50 p.m. It's been a long day. I started out uh, on a uh, somewhat of a television show at 7 o'clock this morning, uh, presenting what's going on on Maui. And I just wanted to give you a quick update. Let's have our business meeting. Let's talk about some important things. But before we do that, I just want to share with you a little bit about who I am. The reason for that is I've come under a lot of attack for what I'm doing here. You wouldn't expect it, right? I never anticipated this. I didn't see this one coming. But I thought it would be important to clear the air on a few things that have happened on some of the videos. And obviously we've raised, you know, over $600,000 at this point in time. And our goal is to raise $808,000. we are not going to stop until we get there. And then we might just do it again, especially when you hear my plan of what it is that we're going to do with the money. And we're going to document every single dollar. Administration costs will be very, very minimal. I have to pay for a tax attorney and a CPA to make sure everything can be purely, perfectly audited. But what we are is a pass-through. Maui LFG is a pass-through to victims. And the way this is going to work is real simple. It's really simple. We've already been doing it. If you're a victim of this fire and you would like to receive support from the world and support from Maui LFG in the form of cash, because cash is king, and that's what I've learned from the people in paradise and Malibu fires and campfires, cash is king, and they end up with none of it when it's all said and done. The big corporations, Red Cross, all these companies, they get the money and then hightail it out of there and send them a bill. We're not going to do that. So if you want your money to go into the hands of victims, you can give to MauiLFG.com. We're going to take all the money we've raised so far, and we're going to seed families with a big chunk of money. We're going, to, we're going to show a video of them, if they want us to, sh telling their story, which also serves the purpose of basically getting their witness, eyewitness testimony for what happened here. Whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of things I could call right now, but I'm not trying to be inflammatory. But I've got my opinions now of what's happened here. And then we're going to seed them with this money. So you're going to see every penny going back into the hands of victims and survivors of this fire. And then we're going to put their GoFundMe and their Venmo accounts and their Cash App and their ways that you can then continue to support them. So my goal in this whole process is to make everybody whole, and I've got a plan for avoiding the land grab, which I'm going to share with you in just a moment. But the reason it's important to bring in members of the community with different skills is because I'm a real estate professional. I've been doing this. I've been licensed since 06. I practice as a farm and ranch broker uh, in Colorado and Wyoming and Kansas. I was licensed in those states. I came over here. I started my own business. And it took me years, and I struggled for years. I cleaned condos. I wiped pubic hair from toilets for years to pay my rent. So you're not looking at some trust fund kid. You're not looking at somebody that was ever given anything after college. When I graduated college, my parents said, here you go. Go find a job. Good luck, and we'll see you at Christmas and Easter. That's it. And so I raised four kids on this island. The oldest is 24, Dylan. He went to the University of Manoa. Uh, computer science. My second son is Ryan, 22 years old, also University of Hawaii, Manoa, uh, finance. And then my third son, Colton, valedictorian, Lahaina Luna, go Lunas, and good job, Colton, for that 4.2 GPA. Just finished his first year at CSU, Colorado State University. And I have my youngest, Hunter, who you've known from the channel, who is, uh, go was going into a sophomore year until this nightmare in, you know, unfolded. But we've been here for a while. We don't consider ourselves locals by any stretch of the imagination. And we realize that uh, we can be looked upon negatively. We, we get that. And we're taking a big risk stepping out and letting, our vo letting my voice be heard. Stephen Covey, 8th Habit. Let your voice, and find your voice and help others find theirs. I'm going to try to help you find your voice tonight, by the way. Because I believe that's how we win this battle, by the way. Is everyone has a voice and everyone needs to do what God calls them to do. But we're a family that's been here struggling. In the recent years, we've been doing pretty good. I was a number one agent with Keller Williams uh, last year. year before that, I was also in the top 3% of the island. And part of that came from my outreach that I did during COVID. During COVID, my channel took off from obscurity. I've been doing videos since 2012, but it took off from obscurity into like people knowing who I was before this ever started because I did what's called the Maui Food Line video. So you don't believe it, go back. They're all there still. But I highlighted the need for money to, to, for money to come into the Maui Food Bank. I didn't raise any money personally. I just said, give to the Maui Food Bank. And that's what happened. And huge donations came in, not just because of me, but because of you, America, reaching out and helping the people of Maui. Well, now we have a catastrophic event, a world-changing event, 
possibly one of the biggest things, there's a lot of things I want to say right now, but I'm not, that's happened. And so I went right back in, in, the, in the Maui food line mode. I'm like, I've got a channel. I've got a Starlink, and they've communicated, they've blocked communications even up to this day. Cell phone calls are dropping. They've not allowed the media in here to show what's going on here. They've blocked photography and videography by FEMA in the burn zone. So I'm just a guy that has a, an iPhone connected to a Starlink with a YouTube channel, and I just started reporting what's going on and showing you what we're seeing on the ground. Because you're not here. We're a long way from the mainland. We're a long way from Germany. We're a long way from, from Europe. And I just want to share with you what's going on here. I've got no bad intentions, and every dollar I'm going to raise is going to go right back into the hands of the victims and the survivors of the fire. I'm going to document every single dollar, every single penny. I've got a tax attorney, a CPA that's going to help me make sure everything is 100% auditable. And so those haters out there, those people that are trying to spread disinformation about what my truest intentions are, I'm here to share with you my heart. I'm here to tell you I know what it's like to live on this island to have no money. I know what it's like not to have enough money to put your kids on an airplane and fly off of this island and start over. you got to have money to do that. You need deposit for your new place that you're going to rent. You have money for the airlines. You have to have one month of expenses at least until you find a new job. We have a bunch of people on this island that are in that position, and I am simply trying to give them the money because I've heard from other victims from the uh, other fires that have happened and Florida hurricanes, and they said they didn't get any money. So I'm just trying to raise just a little bit of seed money and then put those stories in front of you. And I'd like to document every single person that's been affected by this fire. That's the goal. And that's where my heart is. And for you real estate professionals out there, this community needs you. So don't ostracize them, community. And real estate professionals, do whatever God's calling you to do. I know there's other agents that are handing out water and serving food. We're a member of the community, and we're not here trying to land grab. I'm going to teach you and show you how to avoid that? And I've got a great plan that I think will work. I'm not, not sure of all the plans of the enemy, so to speak, but I know one path that could cause a land grab. And so if you just listen to this video, take some notes, and listen to these suggestions, I believe we can, we can beat this thing and we can make sure that the enemy, whoever it, they are, will learn they picked on the wrong island. They picked on the wrong state. They picked on the wrong people. And ultimately... They are awakening the giant, and the giant will come out in a warrior spirit that will fight for what's right, will fight for this land, will fight for this people, and I'm on the side of the good, and I'm sticking around. You're not going to scare me off with your haters and your comments and your edited videos that are spliced together that make me say things I didn't actually say. A few things I want to clear the air on. I made videos of Lahaina Town the second day after it burned. I was in there. Now knowing I've risked my life by going in these horrible chemicals, asbestos, and all these different things, but that's okay. What's done is done. I shot a drone video over the whole area so that you could have pictures of your home and you could share it with your insurance company. I drove my GoPro on my motorcycle so you'd have images of that area for your insurance claims and also for a future litigation because now you can't get in there. Now it's a war zone. Now it's like checkpoints and Checkpoint Charlie and guards and FBI and ATF and Army. I mean... They're here, and we can't go in there, and they won't allow people to go in there. So as a real estate professional, I thought it was important to serve my community by getting this footage and then releasing it to the world. Lots of people offer, offered me money for it. I didn't take it. You see footage of me walking through a home with, the, with my, other, my other son and some other guys that were down there. That was Nuku's home. Nuku gave me permission to go into his home. He was looking for a safe. These people have not been able to go back to their homes to get the contents of their safe. And I've heard rumors about who is rummaging through that. Again, I'm not here to spread rumors, but I'm just telling you. To not allow homeowners to go in to get their stuff is weird. To not allow press to go in there to get their stuff doesn't make sense. To not allow citizens like me to pull over on the side of the road and take pictures and videos from afar of what's going on. To have a flight restriction over an area. I can't fly my drone over there and watch the hillside for future strikes causing fires or looking down and seeing what FEMA's doing. To block everybody out is against our constitutional rights, it shouldn't happen. It needs to stop. And I pray that it will stop, and I believe that it will stop with your help. So, giving the money straight to the victims, we're going to prove that, and opening up their bank accounts with a Venmo or with a GoFundMe so you can give to them directly, that's going to happen. It already has happened, and I'll continue to do that. And we can raise more money to do that if you want to give to MauiLFG.org. But the next step, in my opinion, is to prevent the buyback. And how do you prevent the buyback? 
you have to pay off all the mortgages. Because if you don't pay off the mortgages, these people will get choked out. They'll be unable to pay their mortgages and their taxes. They'll want to sell for pennies on the dollar, which is maybe the plan by whoever's doing this. So we can prevent that by raising, I believe, it's about $3.5 billion. $3 billion, somewhere in there is my estimation of the mortgage load on Lahaina Town. Gary Rosenberg, my favorite lender on Oahu, we helped come up with this number. But ultimately, if we raise that amount of money, there's two ways we can do it, or both. We can do a grassroots movement, creating shirts for Lahaina Town, commemorative shirt. I've already contacted a couple artists that lost everything in the fire. We can make these shirts called Buy Back Lahaina. And then we can sell them. We can start concerts with all kinds of artists. And I'm not saying I want to be a part of this beyond the conceptual level. This is a big, giant project that needs big, giant people and names to put this together. I'm throwing out the concept and the idea because if we do this, then they can't get, the banks can't get Lahaina Town. So we raise this money and we do buy back Lahaina. Buy it back from the banks. Give it to the people and then they can choose what they want to do with their land. The next thing is obviously the environmental issues that we have here. And they're going to spray down some plastic stuff. What do we know about that stuff? Have they excavated out the soil that's contaminated? Where's the oversight? Where's the third-party independent oversight that's going on here? We just need to know what they're doing, what that plan is, because we have a storm that's possibly coming. We've got wind advisories that are possibly on the horizon. What's going to happen? Also, is someone watching the skies here? I've got evidence that I'm not going to share with you on this video, but I've got eyewitness evidence that this could have been some type of, uh, let's put it this way, is the military monitoring these skies every night? Are we keeping an eye out on Maui for a future fire starter? It could be an arson. We don't know what it is. It could be an accelerant that's on the ground, but those videos that I showed of those cars that are burned in the middle of a small little grass field, we know two of those cars had no fuel in them whatsoever. They've been sitting there abandoned for, for a long, long time. So there's some mysteries here that we're trying to solve, and I'm going to keep bringing you that information because we're all about filling the gap. And one of the gaps we've had is the communication gap, the information gap. You could call it the truth gap, but then that points to you know, what you consider truth and what I consider truth. But I'm going to show you with my eyes through this camera what's going on here and then you decide. I'm going to show you through this camera the stories of the people that survived that day, who lost everything. Those are the stories. Within there is the truth, the facts of what happened. And I'm going to present this to you on this channel. So please, like this video, share it, and subscribe it. You guys have done such a wonderful job. We've gotten the attention of the world. And so, congratulations. That was you doing it. And I thank you for reaching out to Joe Rogan. I heard he's going to have um, um, Gabby Tulsa. Gabby... Tulsi Gabbard, Tulsi Gabbard, excuse me, Tulsi Gabbard on the show, and um, anyway, that's huge, right, so that's awesome, we're bringing attention to this thing, and that's what's super important, got a bug flying around here, so air protection, I think, is very important, so I'm throwing ideas out there, I want you to please take notes, this is a business meeting, we need to get organized, right, we're not going to beat this thing if we're not organized, and people have to come together, that's why I've been calling for Starlinks, thank you, we have seven of those delivered today, more, Two more went out in the field. It's important that everyone out there has good internet connection. Just to fill out the forms with FEMA and the Red Cross, it doesn't need to be done on a laptop. But I have called this out before. We need a council. We need a council to come together and to get organized with a strategy, with an emergency strategy. That council needs to include key members of the community, but it also needs to include uh, bankers. It needs to include attorneys, realtors, tax consultants, title reps, and then key individuals from the island. So I'm calling out Archie Kalepa, Tiara Lawrence, Kai Lenny, Slater Trout, Zane and Maddie Schweitzer. Um, there's a few of the names here I'm not going to call out, but those are the big ones. Archie Kalepa, Tiara Lawrence, Kai Lenny, Slater Trout, Zane and Maddie Schweitzer. Because these individuals can start the basis of this council, and there's, there's resources that have come over from Oahu already that are asking me to shout out these individuals, all these voices that are talking on Maui need to come together. We need to start doing town halls. We need to start calling for people to be released from their positions and be held accountable. The people need to know their rights. The people need to know the Constitution. Pull out your Constitution. Google it. Read it. You have the right to speech. You have the right to press. You have the right to assemble. You have the right to bear arms. You have the right to petition. 
you need to know these basic constitutional rights, and it's the sheriff that is to enforce those rights. We as a people need to stand up. I believe what's happening here is not just a wake-up call for the people of Maui. It's a wake-up call for the people of Hawaii. It's a wake-up call for the people of this country. It's a wake-up call for the people of the world to come together and fight whatever this is. Who is it? I don't know. I've got some theories, but I'm not here to present my personal hypothetical theories on what's going on. You might have your theory. Hit me in the comments. I know you guys are all texting me a thousand times a day telling me, watch this website, go to this video. This is my theory. Okay, action. Take it to the people that have got true influential power. I'm just one voice. I'm just one really little real estate agent on Maui sharing ideas. Now you guys got to run with it. I need the digital warriors to get to work. So your thumbs and your fingers are bleeding. You're putting out this information because together as a people, we can activate and take back what's ours. And we can start with this beautiful little piece of paradise. If you won't fight for Lahaina, if you won't fight for your, we calculated it. Every year, uh, six, six million, no, no, 6,000 people come here a day, two, thousand, two million people a year. In 20 years, that's 40 million people that have come to this island, that have memories here, that have gotten married here, honeymooned here, made kids here, celebrated birthdays and anniversaries and come here after a good year on the job. This is your spot. Hawaii is your spot and you know it. It's on U.S. soil. If you won't protect U.S. soil, it's one thing I was told myself. I was raised by a military father and I tried to join the military. My sister taught at the Air Force Academy. She taught leadership at the Air Force Academy. Stephanie, my dad, Sheridan, I worked with TRW. I was in the defense. I was in the defense contracting business in the early part of my career. I've had security clearances with the NSA. You can't even tell what their names are. That's where I came from early on in my career. But I was taught, man, you fight for your country, man. You fight for your country. Now you might go send off to some war that you have no, know nothing about. Okay, that's debatable. But when it shows up on your soil, when it shows up on your shores, man, if you won't fight for that, then it's time to tuck tail and run to Canada, all right? But if you're an American, you fight for your country, period, any way that you can, every way that you can, period. There's no choice. This is U.S. soil. This is where Pearl Harbor happened. This is soil that was bought by the blood of Americans. And we can't forget that. We'll never forget that. I will never forget that. We live under the privilege of this country because of men that died for us, that did what they were supposed to do, that, that answered the call, that gave up everything for a reason, for a belief in a system of democracy and a system of a way that provides freedom and opportunity. They had to die for it, and they did. So to honor that and to honor the children that have died in this town that they still can't account for, to honor the, the parents, the kapuna, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. And everyone reacts differently under these situations. And I know that. And I'm reacting the way I'm reacting. And I'm putting myself out there. I'm risking my family's everything. But it's worth it. Because our country is worth it. Our state is worth it. Our island is worth it. Our town is worth it. It's worth it. It's worth the risk. It's worth it. And if people don't realize that the way we got to where we are in this country is because of individual sacrifice, individual bravery. That's how we got here. And if the sleeping giant doesn't wake up, and who's the sleeping giant? It's that silent majority. It's the loud minority that's, that's, that's disturbing the whole process, and we're allowing it to happen. So I'm talking to the giant, and I'm asking the giant to wake the up. up. It's all about filling gaps, and we have a gap in our country of what we know to do and what we do. 
and we can fill that gap with bravery. As Kyle Lenny says, breaking through that veil of fear. And I believe it starts with praying to God and then being obedient to what he tells you to do. It's real simple, man. It's just so simple. We, we have to do it. And now, this, if this wasn't a, a call to action, I mean, what's going on here? If this isn't a call to action, I mean, I don't know what is. What's it going to take? You go into that town, it looks like a nuclear bomb went off. I'm not saying a nuclear bomb went off, but it is complete destruction. It doesn't get more destroyed on U.S. soil. And I'm telling you, we need air surveillance over this island right now. Okay, what else do I have? Buy back Lahaina. We talked about that. Bring in the, the council of community and professionals. You're going to need professionals to teach you. Title reps. There's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of scammers, a lot of people with a lot of nonsense. You need professionals that have proven integrity. I don't want to forget anything. So, I think I've said everything I want to say. I'm going to end with this. I prayed over the town of Lahaina, not because I'm a minister or a pastor, but I just felt like the right thing to do. Standing over that destructive, that destruction, and just laying my hands, putting my hands, and just praying over the, the, the city and the town and the people and the, those lost. And the prayer that came to my mind and the one that I put in front of the videos and the song that I played is, is an honor. And the upside-down Hawaiian flag is like, that's a message. It's just a message. It just says, you know what? We need to honor the people that died. We need to honor the culture, the deep, rich cultural history of this place, the Hawaiian people. That is at the forefront of what needs to be acknowledged and done. Period. That's first. We need a day of mourning. We need a coming together of the community. We need to, we need to cry. We need to weep over what's happened. We need that time. And you can't just put lip service to it. You've got to do it. That's the right thing to do. But a scripture came to me that I put in front of those videos. And by the way, the six shirts, the five shirts, how many shirts there are that I pulled out of that store that I believe has got evidence that people are calling me from all around the world. Sorry, the gimbal ran out of battery. I have reached out to the owner of that sh those shirts, and I have offered him to do whatever it is he wants to do with those shirts. So... It's not looting if you take something and your intention is to give it back. And also, I believe it's, it's obviously evidence that it probably didn't get bagged at the scene of the crime. And we can't even get in there. So as citizens, we do have the rights to do certain things that we think are in the best interest of our fellow citizens. And to judge otherwise, if you don't have all the information, I know it's tough. But let's remember, there's only one judge. Judge. God. That's it. Period. So let's not judge each other. Let's give each other grace. But this is the prayer that I prayed over in those videos. And I'd like to just pray it again right now. And that is Isaiah 61. I believe this is the first scripture that Jesus read when he got up on the pulpit. But the part that I want to pull out of, of uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 61, I think you should go pull it out yourself and read the whole thing. But I just want to end this, li this, this live, I'm usually live, end this video with this. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That is the prayer that I have for the people of Lahaina, for the island of Maui, for the state of Hawaii, and for our country. Because I know that this can be transformed into something good. That from this event... I believe we have a turning point in the history of this country. I truly believe this is a flashpoint. And I, I implore you, if you have an audience, if you have influence, if you have a big following on Twitter, Facebook, for however long it stays on there, YouTube, the other platforms, we all know which ones they are. Share this message, not for my notoriety. I don't, I don't want any more notoriety, man. Trust me, it's heavy. I just, I just want the message to get out there.
I want to put the attention that this deserves. And with the media blackout, you made a bad decision by blacking out the media because it gave just a regular guy like me a voice on social media. And so I'm asking you to share this. I'm asking you to take action. I'm asking you to pray, to get on your knees and pray for the situation. And I'm asking you to do your best right now for our country. We all saw what happened with COVID, right? We all saw that. It didn't just happen in our country. It happened in the world. And this event here in Lahaina is a world affair. This is in the jurisdiction of the world now. And the world needs to check in. And I'm talking about the people of the world. I'm not talking about the UN. I'm talking about the people of the world. It's time to assemble. It's time to hold the people accountable. It's time to take those out of office that have no business being in office. And it's time to mobilize the good guys. It's just like a like the movies we all get attracted to, right? I don't know if it's westerns that you were into as a kid or spy novels. It's the kind of storyline that makes heroes, that destroys villains, and saves children. You can be a superhero. And if you're a villain, watch out, because we're coming.